Hi, it's Clark and Chris again at Fritz's house, <laughs> Friday Night Highlights. Today we're going to talk about how important the hip line is, the one that moves forward in our patterns. We're going to use this word called pre-positioning. One of our buddies, Mike Molina, he, could, he brought that up. It's, a, it's an excellent word because it describes exactly what we're doing. We're going to talk about four techniques. We're going to talk about triggered salute, and we're going to talk about five swords. Actually, it's only three. Yeah, we're trigger salute, five swords, and then we're going to jump back to uh, mace of aggression. I've seen a lot of people doing mace of aggression where they're avoiding the, uh, the attacker's left arm and they're going over it. This is the, what we talked about last week, how we talked about in, uh, I mean under, in, through, and on top. So when we talk about triggered salute, we're talking about having the right foot slightly forward. And I'll put my hands out here so you can see. I'm in a semi-attention stance here, or I'm in a pre-position stance. My very first move is to pin and then step in. But I'm not stepping into 12 o'clock, I'm stepping into about 11 o'clock. So I'm pre-positioned, I'm pinning. You notice I'm starting to turn my body because it's my hips that control my feet. And there's my palm heel strike. Now what happens below with my knee is that instead of running my patella into their patella, I'm running my patella to the inside of their right knee. This is a a better angle of entry and angle of incidence rather than just two knees clashing into each other. Because I'm six foot two and 250 pounds. I'm gonna go right through your leg no matter where I slam into it. Now we take five swords. Again, we pre-position. Do we know what, whether it's a push, or whether it's a punch, or whether it's a grab? No, we don't know until the catalyst starts. So the catalyst is to, grab, is to punch. The intent is to take my head off. But my response is simply to Instead of pinning like I did in, in uh, trigger salute, I'm immediately going to start to rotate my body, bring my hand up here. I'm framing on the right side of my body. I haven't framed with my left hand yet. And as I step in, I block in the inside of the wrist, and then I completely, and then I come in here. In Cole Family American Kempo and Stewart Family American Kempo, this is called a blip. It's a block plus a hit. It's not a block stop cock and then strike, yes you can still contour down the arm if you bring your hand here, but we're going to make sure that as we step in we make contact with the hand and immediately contour up. I made a, I made a video with my son many years ago wearing a camera, his camera, <laughs> I didn't think it broke, <laughs> and I had a helmet on and Jack, my son, was doing five swords on me. Well he knocked my helmet completely off because he's in a pre-position stance, he brings this up the frame and immediately he's, he's chopping. Okay, now this is an in two. Triggered salute is a straight on in, as if the other arm was there, but you're gonna go right through the arm and then you're gonna to come to here. Ooh, what's that? Starting this. So now we're talking about mace of aggression. Now mace of aggression again has these motions within it. If you're a five foot five and you're going against me, you're not going to hit me in the head, even if you go try to go through my arms when I'm grabbing. Chris, would you come in for just a second? Stand yeah. over here. No, no, stay over here. You're going to do it. He's not going to kill me this way. <laughs> he promised. So because of this grab here, Chris can step in and go through that arm with the block. And you notice that it pushes me back. And I'm a, lot, I'm a big mess. If Chris was five inches shorter, he wouldn't be able to either go over or into. He'd have to go under. And it's real more like, oh, yeah, we got that idea from, from uh, uh, Long Kimono, but you've also got the Reiki Mace for the smaller person. Mm -hmm. the Reiki Mace. Oh. And guess what? There's, there's whatever he wants to do. Thank you for not killing me. So, thanks. <laughs> so, again, we, we, we are going to, we're not in a preposition, we're not in a preposition stance. We're standing just naturally. And because the grab precedes the pull, the grab is the catalyst, the pulling motion is the intent, Probably a headbutt is the secondary intent. So all I'm going to do is just, as I'm pulled, I'm simply going to do the same thing I did in the first two techniques. I'm going to pin. Notice I'm coming this way, not this way. I'm going to come here, pin, and I'm going to strike. Now me, six foot two, Prince, six foot one, six foot one. We have the luxury of striking over or striking into. It's harder for us to get underneath unless we change the target but we don't want to go to formulation. We just want to do the base technique. So again, using this idea of the hip moving in or the hip line, 
instead of being pre-positioned in his technique, because that means we didn't know what was already coming on, what's going on, we get grabbed, we get pulled, we come here, we come down, and I'm going to finish that technique because it's a, it's a real quick technique. Okay, so the important thing to remember is these hips are on a 45 degree angle naturally. But if we do this, guess what? That hip line kind of moves over a little bit more, gives us a little more, gives us a little more time to move into, into our attacks, whether we're being pulled or we're being pushed or being punched at. So the idea is to make sure that your right foot is forward a little bit, and you simply just step in with the motion. I call that directional army, wouldn't you, Chris? Yes, sir. Okay. 